if nothing else that you learn today, this is probably the most important thing I can teach you. This is something most beginners don't realize and it takes years to understand this concept. But when you're dealing with futures data, there's a clear process of decay that occurs over time. Right here in this real-time chart of the gold market, I superimpose the gold daily um, cash data and the futures data so that I connected, I forced the two major highs and lows in March and April to coincide with one another so that you could clearly see over time how the futures price decayed. So let's say that you were trading this particular market. You decided to buy physical gold in mid-March. You held it for three months. It's worth the same amount three months later as when you bought it. But your futures contract, if you bought it at the same time, would be worth almost $10 less. You would have lost $10. Nothing happened to the actual price of gold on a cash basis. Now, why is this important? Not only does it tell you you shouldn't hold long positions for long periods of time in the futures market, but it, um, it tells you that the process of analysis cannot be trusted when you use futures charts. So anytime that you're preparing long-term market analysis, if it's a few days, that's fine. But the, the more evident the decay becomes over time. So if you're trying to do any kind of long-term market analysis, you have to use cash data. That's probably the most important thing I can teach you today. If you don't use cash data, you're not going to get repetition of market behavior. You're going to get continuous distortion, unreliable information, and your whole attempt to make profitable trading a uh, success is going to be pretty much thwarted, in my opinion, because of this decay process. Cash data also has a tremendous advantage that you don't have to worry about continuous contracts, connecting contracts, because what happens when this futures contract expires, you then have to jump to the next contract month, and all of a sudden you'll have a dramatic jump in price, which is another element of distortion that you don't want to have to deal with when you're trying to make your technical analysis approach more scientific and objective. Uh, obviously, if you can't make an approach scientific or objective, then you're probably never going to be able to continuously trade successfully unless you're a really good emotional reader of the markets. Uh, one other element, which is it's, um, something most people won't go to the trouble to do, unfortunately, because it's not readily available. It's not something that's easy. But you'll notice here how the upper chart is drawn in a continuous line fashion. This is what I call wave charts or neo-wave charts. And I'll show you how to do these later. The bottom chart is a bar chart. A bar chart creates an unrealistic representation of reality. When you have a bar chart, that bar is telling you that the high and low of that time frame occurred simultaneously. Obviously, that's not possible. So if you're going to do any long-term uh, or any accurate analysis, it doesn't matter if it's long-term or not, you really need to divide and separate the event when the high of the day occurred first or the low of the day occurred first and separate these in time so it creates an angle of motion, either this direction or this direction. Whichever came first, you want to make sure to plot that first. Whatever came second comes second. If you don't make this separation, then you never know exactly how that day unfolded. You don't know what information you may have missed. It can dramatically impact short-term analysis if the market's high and low occurred this way or it occurred this way. But you won't know that on a bar chart because it looks just like that. Uh, so that's another important uh, step you need to take in further um, making your approach more scientific. Uh, another, no, not yet. Another serious, serious problem that occurs from following futures charts is the complete unreliability of support or resistance. If you follow this uh, cash data, which is the dark black line, let's say you put a support line across here and you'd purchase that uh, physical gold. Obviously, the support line held all the way across. If you did the same thing in the futures chart, it held possibly here, but then it broke it several times thereafter. So that support that you thought was real really wasn't real. To, to compensate for this, the only way you could possibly compensate is to have trend lines that are drawn at a downward angle at the rate of deterioration of the value of that uh, commodity. There's a premium that's added to futures contracts, if you don't know this, and that premium decays with time. The physical underlying gold or value is there with the premium declining over time. So you'd have to have your trend lines all declining on a futures chart at that rate of decay. So why go to all the trouble and deal with all the hassles? The best thing to do is just start with cash data. Then when the opportunity comes about, let's say your analysis indicates something important is about to happen. When it is about to happen, 
then you start looking at the futures data and you start superimposing it or adjusting it to figure out where you would enter based on that cash information.